If a hollow point expands in living muscle, it will also expand in his gelatin. Now before we go on, let's compare the gelatin with the duct seal. Now to give an example of the different characteristics of the duct seal as opposed to the gelatin, we're going to fire this 9mm, 125 grain soft point spear, spear, bullet. spear bullet into both the duct seal and the gelatin. And what do you think is going to happen? I know what's going to happen. What's that? <laughs> it's not going to change the, the bullet is not going to deform at all in the gelatin or in animal tissue because I've shot it in both and it will give you a, a, a marked mushrooming in the duct seal. Do you think there are a lot of bullets that will actually mushroom in duct seal or want mushroom in, in, in tissue? human tissue or oh yes well a very common bullet a 22 long rifle round uh, round nosed bullet yeah. very very common bullet and in human body animal body or gelatin does not deform at all and in duck seal gives you a magnificent mushroom hmm. as good as a hollow point bullet well we'll try it yes Before we show you the penetration in duct seal, we have set up an experiment which will prove two points. First, that duct seal is not a good testing medium. And secondly, that Dr. Fackler's gelatin is indeed calibrated to tissue. The legs you see belong to the rear section of a pig which has just been killed. We're going to use the same bullet we fired into duct seal earlier. It will go through the pig tissue and then into the gelatin. So what have we what have we done here now with this pig meat and gelatin? Okay, basically what we have done, we have taken a bullet that we tested in pure gelatin before, and we had a penetration depth of 77 centimeters. Now we've added 14 and a half centimeters of pig which was the first thing the bullet hit. And we did this to show that the deformation of the bullet by the pig is the same as the deformation by the gelatin, and also to confirm the equivalence in, of gelatin and pig as far as penetration distance. So if we measured this, we got 14, 14, 14 and a half centimeters. We have 50 centimeters here, and, and here we have 11 centimeters of penetration into the second block. This adds up to 75 and a half centimeters in this combination, and with just gelatin, we had 77 centimeters. Before we shot two gelatin blocks, there were side yeah, by side. Yeah, two like gelatin this. blocks. And the bullet went through one of them completely and ended up right ended there. Ended up right over here. And the second time, with the pig meat in front, we fired through the flesh, no bone, went completely through this block, and ended up here, which is a difference from here to here. Which is equivalent to the pig. Which is equivalent to the width of the pig. Yes. So we've shown that the pig meat um, does simulate or <laughs> simulate the gelatin. The gelatin does simulate the pig meat quite effectively. What about the duck seal? Well, now we have quite a different story. In the duck seal, this was the same bullet at the same velocity. And as you can see, we, in the gelatin, we had 77 centimeters. Here in the, we have a penetration depth of 11 centimeters and the bullet has deformed markedly. We see a, a mushrooming type deformation of this bullet in the duck seal, and there's no deformation of the bullet in the pig or the gelatin. This uh, shows quite clearly the severe uh, m limitations, or shall I say misleading nature of determining effects of a bullet using duck seal as a tissue simulant. So we had in, in gelatin, may I use it real for a second? Yes. We had um, a total penetration when we used the two gelatins like that with that round, that nine millimeter round, of about 77 centimeters, which is about 30 and a half inches, 31 inches. And here we have about four or five inches. Yes. So four difference. or five inches in duck seal 
is about seven, about 31 inches in flesh. Yes. So duck seal, a bullet was much more likely to expand in duck seal. Oh, absolutely. In human absolutely. flesh or absolutely. flesh or jelly. So a bullet manufacturer that uses duck seal to show you how well their bullets expand is extremely misleading. You might as well use a brick. That's true. Okay, one of the problems involved in using gelatin, I imagine, is making this stuff. This doesn't come in blocks like this, right? That's right. It does not come in blocks like this. And actually, there's a very large problem involved in making the gelatin. Unfortunately, the maker of the company, when you buy the gelatin in these boxes, it's a, a powder, su powdered substance that comes in 25-pound drums. And uh, you mix the powder, a certain weight amount of powder, with water. And unfortunately, they do not include any directions. And no, no, directions. no directions come with it, unfortunately. As of, as of yet, they don't. We've talked to the company, and maybe they'll change and put directions in. And what has resulted, uh, many people uh, who take up the wound ballistics uh, studies get the gelatin, and they make the assumption that you make it the same way you would jello at home, and that is start with boiling water. And doing that ruins the characteristics that you bought the gelatin for. It ruins the, it the ruins gelatin. It ruins the gelatin, yes. Gelatin is a protein. And as you well know, cooking a protein changes its structure and changes the gelatin. We uh, inadvertently heated the gelatin too high when we first started here and noticed it just did not have the same characteristics. It was very, very weak and, and sloppy characteristics. And, and therefore, we experimented around a little bit and found out that we had to keep it below 65 degrees centigrade and preferably even lower than that. And uh, then, then it comes out all right. Now, you can get directions from, if you write to the company, they will give you directions. And uh, their first, their first uh, direction says, always start with cold water, 45 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And people who don't have these directions or don't know anything about it start out with boiling water, ruin their gelatin. And there are a lot of studies uh, in the literature of people who use this gelatin. For instance, if you see anyone who's got a temporary cavity uh, for the M16 of about 25 centimeters, you know that they ruined their gelatin because the gelatin gets very sloppy. The high-speed camera will give you a much larger temporary cavity, but the cracks will be smaller because it's m much more flexible and doesn't, uh, it's, so it, it just totally ruins. If you make it correctly, it's beautifully reproducible and very, very useful. If you make it wrong, you can ruin it. And most people have made it wrong, and that's unfortunate. We, we hope that the company will put directions and put a put a, uh, a limitation for instance in the directions which they send us they have at step five you heat in a container of hot water but they give no limitation mm -hmm. you know how high do you heat yeah. and that's that's so so really you know uh, and but when you call them on the telephone we talk to their research director and he said oh absolutely you'll ruin your gelatin if you heat it and i said well, well, nothing on this why don't you drum. why don't you tell people that there's nothing on the drum that says that's that. right there's nothing and that's unfortunate so i think the company is really partially responsible for the uh, the bad results we came upon it uh, just because uh, my technician happened to notice it and then we we looked at it and we thought about it a bit we experimented with it and we found yes as a matter of fact it changes a great deal if you heat it too high 